each of us who lives in a house, apartment, or skyscraper has a carbon footprint. We work in a building or study in a building, and then we do groceries in another building. So many buildings in our lives. Cities are like concrete jungles, and they have become our new natural habitat. There is one problem. We use millions of tons of steel and concrete to build that jungles, and the production of steel and concrete requires so much energy that it consumes 40% of the total energy consumed worldwide, leaving behind an enormous amount of carbon dioxide, the primary cause of climate change. This puts the building industry on top of the list of the most polluting human activities. And the population is still growing. Each year, there is 80 million more of us. So more housing is needed, more steel and concrete to build that housing. The problem is only getting worse. But now imagine if we could turn this polluting industry into the cleanest one. Or even better, imagine if we could turn this polluting industry into one that could reverse climate change. Maybe, maybe, it's time to start using a less contaminating material. Maybe timber. Today, we have the technology to glue timber planks in infinite ways. We can obtain high-strength beams, slabs, arches. From a structural perspective, timber is super strong, and we are ready to build timber skyscrapers. Norway has just finished the tallest timber building in the world, with 18 stories. The whole structure is timber. Timber is also much cheaper. This opens great opportunities for developing countries. And of course, timber is beautiful. Look at the ceiling above you. So strong, cheap, and beautiful. So many benefits. But still, the biggest bonus is the sustainability of timber. As you know, when trees grow, they remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and they return oxygen in exchange. Then trees use this carbon to produce wood and keep growing. This means that the polluting carbon from the atmosphere is now locked within the tree trunk. Forests sequester the most carbon during the growing stage. Once a forest is mature, this cycle slows down. So ideally, we would like to have continuously growing forests. We should harvest mature trees for construction purposes and fill the empty spaces with young trees. This way, timber structures can be seen like enormous carbon storages. The atmosphere could begin to heal and the building industry could find its path towards a sustainable future. Timber skyscrapers. Sounds like a fantastic, innovative solution to many of our human problems. We love innovation, but like any other innovation, it comes with some hidden consequences. For example, everybody thought that plastic was a great material 50 years ago, but today we find it in our food or smartphones for easier lives. But sometimes they explode in airplanes. <laughs> Timber skyscrapers for climate change. But they were. <laughs> Maybe I should have said obvious consequences in this case. So after saying this, you can guess who I am. A fire safety engineer. We can't just build timber skyscrapers like this. That would be a disaster. And I really don't want to be the annoying one who puts a brake on innovation. But safety is also important. We need to study this. Let's start with the chemistry. If we have timber as our fuel and oxygen, which we have in air, we just need a small spark to start a combustion reaction where the oxygen reacts with the timber. And the products of any combustion reaction are flames, carbon dioxide, and water. Carbon dioxide. This means that if a timber structure burns, all the carbon that was stored within the structure is sent back to the atmosphere. 
not to mention that fire challenges life safety. We don't want to send the occupants of a timber building to the atmosphere as well. So, if a timber building burns, our carbon footprint is as big as before, and we have some serious lawsuits. <laughs> Not good at all. If timber skyscrapers are to become a reality, we have to make sure that we don't convert them into ash and that people can evacuate safely. Evacuation, very, very important. Let's have a look on this. As a fire safety engineer, this is what I see when I look at a single house, a compartment. When there is a fire inside this compartment, the fire safety evacuation strategy looks like this. Inside, you are not safe. Outside, you are safe. <laughs> Inside, you are not safe. Outside, you are safe. It is fast and simple. We are out way before the fire gets dangerous. But we said we want to go tall. This is what I see when I look at a high-rise building. <laughs> Lots of compartments stacked on top of each other, connected with a staircase. The problem starts to get tricky. Walking down 20 stories, imagine that you had a knee surgery after playing soccer, and maybe you are carrying a kid can easily take 40 minutes. This gives a lot of time for the fire to grow to uncontrollable dimensions and even to spread into the staircase where the people are evacuating. To prevent that, we have the strategy of containing the fire in the compartment where it started. Actually, we have to design buildings in such a way that the fire can't spread. This is because a high-rise structure can withstand losing one of these compartments. But if we lose more than this, game over. <laughs> to keep the fire in one compartment, it's called compartmentation strategy. Compartmentation makes sure that the fire will not spread through the building. It prevents structural collapse, but most important, compartmentation makes sure that the staircase, the evacuation path, is going to be free from smoke and heat giving people all the time they need to evacuate the high-rise. In one sentence, compartmentation is critical for fire-safe high-rise buildings. For steel and concrete buildings, this is doable. But how on earth we achieve compartmentation if the compartment itself, the floor, the wall, the ceiling, is timber and it burns? They call me. Let's look for a solution. How does timber burn, by the way? Timber doesn't burn. At high temperatures, timber decomposes. Part of the timber decomposes into char, which forms a char layer, and the remaining part decomposes into flammable gases. The flammable gases flow out of the timber, mix with oxygen, and react. So when we see flames, it is not timber burning, but only the flammable gases reacting with the oxygen. All these magics happens in the decomposing layer, which moves like a front, because once it's done here, it moves deeper into the timber to keep converting more and more timber into char and flammable gases. But this decomposing front needs to be hot, it needs energy to be able to transform timber into char and flammable gases. And it receives this energy from its own flame at the surface. But sneaky nature has already decided some time ago that the char layer is going to be an excellent insulator, which means that it stops the heat from going through. And after some time, we built a pretty thick char layer. So now we have a really good insulator. The thicker the char layer, less and less heat from the flame can reach the decomposing front. So the decomposing front doesn't have the energy to keep transforming more timber into char and flammable gases. So the production of the flammable gases stops, 
if there is no more flammable gases, no more fuel to feed the flame. So the flame starts to get smaller and smaller, and eventually it extinguishes, all by its own. This is what we call self-extinguishment of timber. This is how nature has designed trees to withstand raging wildfires by forming this protective char layer. As long as the tree is thick enough, there will be enough healthy wood remaining when the flame extinguishes for the tree to survive. And so it is with buildings. As long as a timber member is thick enough, the structure can withstand the charring of the outer layer while the fire dies out. If you don't believe me, look at this. This is a historical picture taken after a fire. We can see a horizontal timber beam supporting two steel beams that have completely deformed with the heat. It's true, the timber beam is charred all over, but still, it is maintaining its structural performance. But the steel beams have completely failed so in this case, the, the, the timber has performed much better than the steel. Do you remember compartmentation? Well, for timber buildings, self-extinguishment is the only way to achieve compartmentation. It's the only way to prevent structural collapse. So self-extinguishment is the new fire safety strategy for timber buildings. So, what is my role in all this story? Experiments. Lots of experiments. I wanted to understand how, when, and why different timber structures might self-extinguish or why they may not. So I closed myself in the fire lab and constructed hundreds of small timber compartments and I set them on fire. I swear I had permission to do that and everything was legal. <laughs> so, some of these compartments had only one timber wall. Other compartments had two timber walls. Other had two timber wall and ceiling. All the configurations you can imagine. In the next videos, you will be looking through the door towards the inside of my compartments. You can see that one of them self-extinguishes and the other one kept burning until it collapsed. Why? To answer why, I had lots of sensors in my experiment. Many of them burned, but those that, but those that survived gave me really good data. I analyzed all this data, and I could answer to questions such as, how many timber walls can I have if I want self-extinguishment to happen? Is it the same to have a timber wall as a timber ceiling? Or does the temperature of my fire change if I have additional timber walls burning? We basically developed a new fire dynamic theory for timber buildings. Then we took this new theory and moved into the real world. We designed a full-scale timber compartment experiment and set it on fire, of course. We put all our new knowledge into this experiment, and we prayed for it to self-extinguish. You can't imagine the tension. It was burning like hell. <laughs> but after some time, when the fire started to, started to decay, self-extinguishment started to happen. And eventually, it self-extinguished fully, all by its own. The compartment didn't burn through. This means that we achieved compartmentation thanks to self-extinguishment. The test was a success. We pushed the boundaries of our knowledge and we showed it is possible. So again, timber skyscrapers, beautiful and sustainable. We dreamed about the impossible and research connected all the bits and pieces from evacuation to compartmentation to self-extinguishment and made them possible, every day a bit more possible. Today, this kind of research is used by engineers to design buildings like the 18th story in Norway. All this is possible because today we understand better 
how timber burns, but also we understand better all the hidden consequences and tricky aspects of fire safety engineering. If we continue pushing, tomorrow timber skyscrapers will reshape the skylines of our cities and hopefully they will change the direction of our future. Thank you.